Today's video is going to be about Sir William Blackstone. We took a look at John Locke and a brief look at Cato for part of the history of the, the English history of the freedom of expression of our rights and what rights we may have or don't have and why. And Blackstone has a lot to say on this subject too. He said, the liberty of the press is essential to the nature of a free state, but this consists in laying no previous restraints upon publications and not in freedom from censure for criminal matter when published. And we'll talk more in a couple minutes about his comment about laying no previous restraints on publications. Um, but he did believe that while we have the freedom to publish things and the freedom to speech, that criminal matter, what he defined as criminal matter, should be punished. His idea of traditional common law punished private libels and seditious, blasphemous, and offensive publications. And he believed that having those things punished was still consistent with the idea of having a free press. He said the principal aim of society is to protect individuals of those absolute rights which were vested in them by the immutable laws of nature. He felt our rights are life, personal security, personal liberty, and private property. He said freedom is a right inherent in us by birth and one of the gifts of God to man at his creation. But he said something some other men have not said. He believed that humans, our nature is fallen and corrupt and that influenced his view of our rights and how we should deal with them. He said that our natural liberty was wild and savage, which was less desirable than obedience and conformity. So us functioning as a society, he believed it was better for us to obey and to conform. He said the function of our society isn't just to protect these natural rights that we have, but also to civilize human beings. And he felt we needed to be civilized because of our fallen nature. He said that natural liberty is alienable, not inalienable, like other men have said, and that it's subject to regulation by laws that the community makes for the public good. And that good includes the rights of individuals and social values like order, morality, and religion. So he, he said, we do have these rights, but they're, they're alienable and should be subject to laws for the common good the public good. And like I've mentioned before, that gives me pause because who decides what the public good is and how is that measured? He believed that when we individuals enter into a society that we've agreed to submit to the authority of whoever we are regarding as capable of governing for the public good. So we agree to be subject to the authority. Blackstone stressed that there is a hierarchical relationship between a ruler and his subjects. So he would have been quite different from how early Americans viewed government of not wanting a king and the subjects all below the king. Uh, Americans wanted um, a more equitable relationship but Blackstone did see it as right and proper that there be the ruler and then the subjects underneath that ruler. He said law is a rule of action which is prescribed by some superior and which the inferior is bound to obey. He believed there should be laws, but he did define it as using the terms superior and inferior. He, however, did believe that a king's powers were to be limited by laws that declared the rights of the people. 
that the king was superior to his subjects, but that there should be laws to protect the rights of the people that he is governing. Blackstone believed that freedom of thought and expression are elements of natural liberty. These are things that God gave us, that they are natural rights that we have because we are human beings. Now, the press had become free in 1694 when Parliament did not renew the law authorizing censorship. So going back for a minute to something that Blackstone said, he said, freedom, um, liberty of the press is essential to the nature of a free state, but this consists in laying no previous restraints upon publications. So he was referring to the fact that the press had become free in 1694, and he did not support the government going back in time and censoring things from back in the day. He said that our expression, freedom of expression, is an alienable right that was subject to regulation for the common good. There's that term again, common good. And how do we define that? Publications that violated laws against seditious, blasphemous, immoral writings were called licentious. And he supported those types of publications for being punished. To subject those writings to punishment was necessary for the preservation of peace and good order of government and religion, the only solid foundations of civil liberty. So he believed so strongly in liberty, what it's founded on, that he did believe that something should be punished in order to preserve the good. That is an overview of Sir William Blackstone. He's, he said quite a bit more, but this is a synopsis. Next time we will move from the English history of the freedom of expression more to how things were developing in America.